and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Why don't you air five your neighbor as you're being seated. Welcome to New Life. Welcome, welcome. We are so, so in love with Jesus here. If this is your first time, as you can see, we are committed to the Word of God and we're committed to the Spirit of God. And man, I do believe that we are in the middle of a move of God. I know times are very, really, really chaotic. It's really, really unique situation we're living in. But how many of you guys know that God is in control? God is not on the edge of his seat, biting his nails. He knows exactly what's taking place and he is moving and how he's doing it is through the people of God. So today I am excited to get fired up for the word of God. I'm excited to open up God's word with you and I'm believing that God's gonna move today. If you're with me, can I get an amen in the room or in line, uh, amen on the chat for joining us online. Before we jump in, I want to take this time to continue our worship as we receive our tithes and offerings. And this is for those who call New Life home, please, this is your first time, do not feel obligated to give. We want to take this time to give back to the Lord. And I just wanna thank all of you uh, from the bottom of our hearts. I mean, honestly, you guys, your consistency, this community, this amazing group of people, you're consistent with your engagement, you're consistent with your faith, and you're consistent with your giving. I would encourage you and beseech you to continue to give in times I know it's really tough and hard, but man, we wanna trust God in everything. We wanna obey his commands. And how many of you guys know that God's in control of our finances and it's not what he wants from us, it's what he wants for us. So there's many ways to give. You can give in the back in the bucket or you can text uh, uh, 77977 to, and write NLCCO and you'll get like a really cool link and it'll prompt you on how to give. So, amen? amen. Can we pray before we dive in? Father, we love you. We thank you so much, Jesus, just for everything that you're doing, Lord. And Lord, even though it's pretty uh, chaotic and it's super intense in, in the world right now, Lord, we know that you are a God in, in control. So we just ask Holy Spirit in this moment and in this space that you would give us peace right now to dive into your word and to just listen to your spirit and listen to your word as it goes for us. Bless, bless, bless your word. Anoint my lips, Father. This is not my words, this is your word. It's the message, not the messenger. It's in Jesus' name I pray and all of God's people say amen. Well, welcome New Life. My name is Andrew Paz. I'm one of the pastors here at New Life and I have the amazing honor in opening up God's word with you today. Pastor Steve and Pastor Tammy, they're away with us. Yes, that's for Jesus, not for me. I grab that and give it to the Lord. So I'm excited, Pastor Steve and Pastor Tammy, man, every time they ask me, I, number one, they are, for me, they're the GOAT. They're the greatest of all time. I, I feel like every time pastor asks me to preach, it's like Michael Jordan passing the ball to a no-name bench player. So why don't you turn to Cameron right now and, and tell him, like, don't drop it, don't drop it. Don't drop the ball, pause. <laughs> I'm excited because I am super passionate about a passage that I've actually preached before, but I've never seen it in this light or in this observation. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Matthew chapter four. And before we read, I wanna ask this question for everyone today as you're turning there. How many of you here have ever been lied to? Every hand should go up. Yep, especially if you're married. I don't know if my wife's in this service, hopefully not, but there she is, okay. <laughs> She's lied to me. No, I, I've lied to her. How many of you guys, let me say this. How many of you guys, when you've, been, when you've been lied to, it's like if someone told you like a flat out lie, they were to say like, the better Los Angeles basketball team is the Clippers. You just know that's a flat out lie. Like, no, no shot, never. It's always the Lakers, amen? Where are my Laker fans at? Come on, make some noise, man. RIP, Kobe, I love you, man. Anyways, I had to throw that in there. But listen, listen, have you ever been lied to flat out where you're just like, dude, I'm not gonna buy into this lie, there's no way, right? Or how, how many of you guys, with a show of hands, help me out here so we can set up where we're headed today have ever been lied to where someone has told you 90% truth, but the last 10% was like the twist. There are like, I, I've been, so for example, if someone were to come at me and say like, hey, Pastor Andy is like not a man of God, he's not a person that's in his word, he's not a man of prayer, he's just like, I would be like, dude, you're, you're way out of line. Like he's an amazing man of God, he's a mentor of mine, I love him and his wife dearly, like no shot, right? But if someone were to say like, hey, Pastor Andy's an amazing man of God, he's in his word, but he's, he's known to bend the truth from time to time, especially with certain New Life staff members like Pastor Paz, then, I, then I'll be like, okay, yeah, I may, I may believe that. Let me grab onto that. 
How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, you, you receive, like, twisted truth. Today, my heart is that I would expose the tactics of the enemy. I am deeply, deeply, deeply saddened, and I'm tired of you and I being crippled in our calling, being disabled by the lies of the enemy, because what I know to be true in the passage that we're going to look at today is that the enemy does this to you and I. He'll twist truth. And we're going to see in Matthew chapter 4 how he does this. And the title of my message today is The Twisted Truth. Turn to your and say, The Twisted Truth. I am so excited to preach this today because I have never seen this before. I've actually preached on Matthew 4 before. And I have more recently have discovered, man, the tactics of the enemy are so, so intense. And my heart today is that you and I would see what he is doing to you and I that is paralyzing us in our calling, paralyzing you and I in our giftings, and paralyzing the, the, the amazing plans he has for New Life Community Church and the people at New Life Community Church. What my main heart is today is that you and I, we live in a generation that is trading God's truth for twisted truth. And we're gonna see in scripture today what the enemy does. If you are in Matthew 4, before we jump into verse 1, we see in chapter 3, just to set this up, Jesus gets water baptized. The Father is pleased. The dove is ascending, a representation of the Holy Spirit. And the Father speaks to the Son and says that this is my Son who I'm loved and I'm well pleased. Listen to him. The Father affirms that this is Jesus. And then immediately in Matthew chapter 4, we see that Jesus is led into a difficult situation. Can I just say real quick, this is not part of my notes, but I just want to set this up for any one of you that is like a new believer. You just gave your life the last maybe three months, six months. If you've been told that when you say yes to Jesus, it's going to get easier, you're not going to be led into hard situations, you were lied to. Our Savior in verse uh, one in chapter four is immediately led into a wilderness to be tested by the devil. If you gave your life and you thought it was just gonna be like fun and games and no hard situations are ever coming, absolutely not. I want to actually like break that mold and that's not the case. We're gonna see in this amazing passage how the enemy is twisting truth to Jesus. So in verse one, we're gonna see Jesus in the wilderness and the enemy comes at him three times, but I wanna highlight verse six specifically. If you're there, say go. In verse one it says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by who? After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, no duh. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Here it is, look. Verse 5, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, now this is the devil quoting scripture to Jesus. Watch this in verse 6. It says, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the what? Against a stone. The first observation I want us to look at today is the twist. I'm going to say the twist. You see, what's happening in this moment is the enemy, the devil of our souls, his tactics, he exposes himself. And my prayer is that we would see it for what it is. He doesn't come at Jesus with a lie. He's actually in verse 6 quoting Psalms 91 verses 11 and 12. He's quoting truth to the embodiment of truth. John 14 says that Jesus says, I'm the way, the what, and the light. John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was in the beginning. The beginning was what? Flesh, God, right? Jesus is literally the embodiment of truth. The enemy is coming at our Lord and Savior in this moment, and he's trying to twist truth to throw Jesus off. This is so critical for you and I to see today that's going to help us in these very dark, chaotic, demonic times where now more than ever we need to be rooted in the word of God to stand twisted truth. If the enemy knows scripture, what does that say? That we need to know our word more than ever. We need to hide it in our hearts and we need to be able to combat it because I've always thought the enemy would just come at you and lie, which he does. He does. He's a liar. 
He's an accuser of the brethren, and all he wants to do is bring you and I down, right? He wants to cripple us. He wants to disable us, right? But instead of just lying, he also, in one of his tactics, is he'll twist truth for you and I to buy into it so that we take a little bit of it and it disables you and I into actually believing what the word of God really says about who we are and what we're called to do to where then we're disabled into the things and the amazing gift mixes that God has birthed in us so that we can reach this really, really dark world, right? Thank God Jesus knew who he was in this passage. That's why in chapter three we see the father speak so clearly So the question is, do you know who you are? Do you know what God's truth, his word says about us? That we are a masterpiece? That we're the apple of his eye? Huh? That we're fearfully, wonderfully made, made with a purpose, on purpose, that you and I have an especial calling in this time to reach a dark world. We sit here disabled in our calling because we've taken the bait from the enemy. And now more than ever, we have to be rooted in the word of God. Growing up my whole life, since I I grew up here at this church, and uh, I've always just thought like, man, the enemy is just a liar. Yeah, not only is he just a liar, but he comes at us with twisted truth. Can I prove this to uh, to you guys? Can Can we go deep today? Is that cool? Our second observation I want us to look at today is the trade. Someone say the trade. You see, this happens The enemy does the same tactic he did to Jesus in Matthew 4 and Genesis chapter 3. We see the same thing take place with our Lord and Savior in 4, chapter 4 of Matthew. The same thing happens in chapter uh, 3 of Genesis with Adam and Eve. I want to read this. This is so good. I'm really eager for us to see this today. It says in verse 1 in chapter 3, Now the serpent was crafty more than any wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will what? Here it is in verse 4. You will certainly, or you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be what? You will be like a God. It's in this moment he takes truth and he twists it to Adam and Eve. You see, Adam and Eve were made in the image of God. And the enemy is coming at them and saying that you, will be, you can be like a God. The same thing that takes place in 4 is happening in chapter 3 of Genesis in the very beginning. The tactics of the enemy hasn't changed. He knows truth and he'll twist it for you and I to buy into it, to disable us. And that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. They traded away their calling, their birthright, everything for this lie. The question today is how many of us here in this room, including myself, have traded away everything God has for us for twisted truth? Because we bought into this lie. Can we go really deep today? Is it cool that I give you some more context to what's happening here? And Genesis chapter 2, verses 8, this is so good. God writes, and it shows that in this beautiful passage that he, in the beginning of time, creates man and woman and says that it is very good. And he puts them in this garden, the Garden of Eden, that's perfect harmony, that we were supposed to be the creation, and he was supposed to be the creator, and we were supposed to live in harmony with our, with our heavenly Father. And obviously the enemy comes in and he twists truth and he makes them buy into something. But in chapter 2 and verse 8, we see that the Lord, our God, placed two trees in the middle of this garden. The tree of life, which is what we're supposed to partake with. The tree of life that's supposed to be us trusting in the Lord, him being God, us being the creation, us following him. Or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You see, the Lord places a choice before mankind in his amazing sovereignty and in his grace, the freedom that he has given you and I to make a choice. And what I love in chapter 2 and verse 8 says that in the middle of the garden, could it be that in the middle of our situation and our circumstances and our difficulty, our hard times, that you and I are faced with a choice? 
that we're going to allow God to be God and partake of the tree of life and lean on him and trust him and in his ways and that his ways are higher than our ways? Or are we gonna try to define good and evil, give into the enemy's twisted truth and try to actually think that we know what's good for us and we know what's right and we're partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? There are so many of us, including myself, that have bought into this trade, the trade of what we are called and meant to do. We are masterpieces that God wants to use in a miraculous, powerful way. What we know to be true in his word is that he partners with his creation to carry out victory to those that are lost, dead in their sins. You need to know who you are. You need to know God's word so that you can combat this trade that Adam and Eve threw away in the garden. <clears throat> in the garden. To me, this is a powerful, powerful picture. And the question today is, how many of us are throwing away our gift mix because we're not in God's word? because we're not allowing it to transform our minds, it not transform our hearts, not let it take residence in our heart that we would allow it to renew our minds, right? Let it cut us sharper than any two-edged sword. Instead, I myself with you, this is what I find myself doing. I find myself in God's word inconsistently, not really allowing it to penetrate my heart I'll be honest with you, I love the U version, I love verse of the day, but I don't know about you, but sometimes that can be a kryptonite for me because I just do a verse of the day and that's it. And then, I, and then I find myself doing the bare minimum and I'm trading away what the Lord has for me and my household and my future and my callings, all this, and I'm giving into his twisted truth and I, I end up reading his word and I don't know about you, but I, I even, Take things out that I don't like. All that? No, I, I don't think marriage should be defined like that. That's not good, God. And I'll scroll through and be like, oh, premarital sex? Yeah, no, no, no. That's cool. I, I think that's wrong. And I'll take that out. And I'll place it here. Or I'll throw it away. It's like, man, I've allowed the enemy to disable me and then I go to God's word and I start picking and choosing what I think is good and what is right and what should be applicable and what should not be applicable. I'm so convicted, church, because there is so much darkness taking place in this world today. And now more than ever, we need to be rooted in the word of God and we need to allow the whole counsel of God's word to transform our minds, our hearts, our soul, and our spirit and stop picking and choosing. We could let opinions dictate our lives all day. That's, I can find thousands of opinions on social media. I find myself scrolling through more news feeds than scrolling through the pages of the Bible. And now more than ever, especially knowing that the enemy's tactic is to bring truth and twist it and pervert it and make it to where I'm not fully effective in my callings and giftings. Now more than ever, I need to be rooted in the word of God so that I can be an answer to this dark generation that you and I live in. Romans 1 25 beautifully says, and this is the, pretty much sums up the generation that you and I are living in today. This is Paul talking about Adam and Eve here. It says, they exchanged the truth about God for a what? And worship and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. How many of you with the show of hands here today are thankful for Jesus? Come on, make some noise for the king of kings. How many of you are thankful that by grace, you and I have been saved, right? You see, in the garden, we see these two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we fast forward the tape now to the New Testament, and Jesus defeats the enemy in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, and the enemy flees from him. But what's so powerful is Jesus now is entering into his ministry and he's telling everyone, he's turning the world upside down or right side up, and he's saying that I am the tree of life. I am the one that, apart from me, you cannot do anything. 
The reality is that we need to put Jesus back in his rightful place. He is all truth and we need to allow him to dictate and govern our lives. I knew this was going to be a tough one. I, I'm getting a little, I, it's, it's a sharp sword, man. This is convicting me too. John, uh, John beautifully talks about this in chapter uh, 15, verse 5, coming up on the screen. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the what? The branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus is the source. Jesus is the tree of life. And he's saying, take from me, put me back in its rightful place, get into my word, know my heart, so that we can combat the lies of the enemy, so that you and I can make a difference, so that we can get to God's destination for our lives by being in God's truth, which is his word. The last observation I want us to see where, the, where we're at today is the truth. Someone say the truth. The reality is you and I have been crippled by the devil's twists and we want answers, but here's the thing. <laughs> Every answer that you and I need and want is found in the word of God. And how you get to this book, to get to this place of understanding that this is God breathed, God inspired, 2 Timothy 3.16, it's inerrant, it's flawless, infallible. How you get to this point is by saying yes to Jesus, making him the source, the tree of life, putting him in his rightful place, and then saying, all right, Lord, I'm gonna dive in deep into your word, which is your heart. But so many of us, like myself, have been stuck in between a hard place. You see, in Matthew 4, the enemy is misquoting scripture. He's twisting it for Jesus to take the bait, right? This is such a powerful observation because most of us, including myself, we're stuck in the middle between two truths. You see, there's the truth of my situation, my circumstance, what I'm going through, what I feel, the anxiety, the depression that may creep in, you name it, how the enemy comes and attacks, right? The truth for you, it could be some of you here today have got an ungodly diagnosis that, you know, you received something from the doctor and that's what, you know, it reads. There's that truth of your situation, and then there's the truth of what God's promises says in his word. Watch this. If I don't know my Bible, and I don't know who I am because of what my Bible tells me, then I'm going to give in and stay in this place, this truth of my situation and circumstance, and I'm gonna be disabled, I'm gonna be crippled here. And I'm gonna say, man, if I only had this, and if I only had that, and, and, and if I only had the answers to everything that's taking place. Or I look to God's word, which is truth, and I say, Lord, your word says that by your stripes we are healed. Your word says that be anxious for nothing, but in all supplication and prayer, give it to you, Father. Your word says that you're the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> If I put Jesus in his rightful place and if I don't get stuck in this truth and actually look to God's word, which is all truth, I promise you, church, you and I, we will be able to make a powerful difference in this community and in our families, in our homes, and the, uh, our loved ones, the people around us, our friends that we love dearly. It's time to stop getting stuck in between two and start looking to God's word. You want the answers, you want where to go, how to get there, it starts by being in the word of God. That's the truth. We need to look to God's word always. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've read the Bible so much now and I could always do better and I need to do better. And that's the conviction today. That's, that's why this message is heavy on my heart because I know I need to be better. I need to be more immersed in my word, especially when there is so much chaos and you can just spend hours on social media looking and scrolling through so much opinions and chaos. But instead, I'd rather look to God's heart and his word and not allow that to throw me or waver me. I got a calling to get to. I got a mission to keep. I have a destination to arrive to because of God's word and same for you. But if you're like me, you struggle because it's one thing to read God's word, 
and meditate on it, meditate on it and quote scripture, it's another thing to make it the foundation of your life and you stand on it and you can live on his word and you can apply it daily and you can actually be everything that God has called you and I to be and that nothing will waver or shake us, no storm, no disease, no nothing because God's word promised me bigger and greater things. His truth is not the enemy's twisted truth. His truth is not the world's limited perspective. I'm not looking internally, I'm looking exter or I'm not looking external, I'm looking internally to the supernatural things of what's to come and what's to take place. Me and my house, I will stand on the word of God. I'm building my life. I don't care what the world says. And I don't care if you think this book is dated. It has transformed and changed me. It has transformed and changed so many. I am building my life on the word of God today. The question is, will you do the same? Will you put Jesus all truth John 14 sits, the way, the truth, and the life, the tree of life, would you let him be your creator and you be creation? And you say, Pastor Pause, I wanna leave this place today more in love with God's word. I wanna leave this place today not allowing God's word to be an afterthought or a second, but the first go-to every single day. The Bible says that his word is a guide into our path, a light into our feet. If you wanna know how to get to the destination for your family, for yourself, for your loved ones, it starts here. Can we church, can we new life, can this community, can we make a decision today to put Jesus in his rightful place? He has the tree of life and allow his word to transform us and keep and be rooted in it and stay immersed in it and have hunger for it. My brother told me this once when he came back from YWAM, I loved it. He says that he doesn't read God's word to get fed, he reads God's word to stay hungry. That's what I wanna do. I wanna read this more and more. I wanna be more hungry after your word, Father. I wanna know more of your will and your, more of your ways. I wanna stop looking to this limited world and this limited perspective, and I want your word to transform my life so that I can see the blessings come, not just in my family, but my family's family, and in this world, and it would permeate to all the nations. So my prayer today is that we would leave this place not just doing the bare minimum verse of the day. <laughs> and if you are doing that, no condemnation, but let this be a, a log in the fire. Let this be a wake up call in this very dark generation that God's word has to be the standard. So today, can we pray together? Can I pray over us that we would leave hungry for more of God's truth? and that we would leave more, more eager to be immersed in his word, that it would bathe us, his scripture would, would resonate in our hearts, and then that we would walk it out, and we would build our lives on it, and we won't be crippled anymore in our calling. That's my prayer for us today, New Life. So would you stand with me, and if you're walk, tuning in online, would you just put the distractions, say, uh, distractions away? I want everyone to stand up, and I just want us to pray and my prayer is that we would leave here transform wanting more of God's word to be the foundation to everything we do. So with every hand lifted as a sign of surrender, all the distractions aside, right where you're at in your home, if you're tuning online, Father, we need you so much, Lord. In a very chaotic time, Lord God, we know that your word has promises and is truth, Lord God. Dare we go outside your word, Father, forgive us for partaking of this tree of knowledge and good and evil. Lord, we want the tree of life. We want you, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We want your word, Lord God, to be the standard of what we do, to be the foundation of who we are. And we're not gonna rip apart the things we like or dislike, Lord, but we're gonna trust you completely and wholeheartedly and press forward to the good things, Lord. I pray for this community so much. I pray for, as we leave, that we would be immersed in your word. Lord, not to be Bible fatheads, Lord God, but to be a beacon of light to those that are lost and broken. Now more than ever, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us hunger for your word. Give us such a hunger for your word, Father. Forgive us, Lord God, for not making the main thing the main thing, which is you. Father, we love you so much and that in your grace and in the conviction 
You're allowing us to grow. So in the name of Jesus, let everyone under the sound of my voice, would they leave here on fire for your word and for more of your truth and not giving in to the enemy's twisted truth. Father, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give it up for Jesus, man. Hey, I'm Steve Abraham, the pastor of New Life Oxnard. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. You can join us live every Sunday for a new sermon and live worship. Also, be sure to take a minute to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of our new videos or live streams, and please share with a friend. And if you would like to partner with us in furthering the gospel, please click the link below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.